This video is from a CE5 session that took place on April 23rd, 2019 from approximately 6 o'clock p.m. until 9.45 p.m. at the Horsepen Wildlife Management Area in Buckingham, Virginia. This video features three separate clips. Um, the first clip is, that's shown is from a stationary game cam. And then the second and third clips are from a handheld IR cam. Here's our first clip from the evening of April 23rd, 2019. It was unseasonably warm that evening for here in Central Virginia. You'll see we're all um, wearing shorts and short sleeve shirts. And uh, it was a really nice evening. Um, it was, I don't know. 75 degrees probably. There were six of us present for this session plus Jack, my constant doggy companion. And in the clip you can see all of us, um, but pay attention to the group that's directly in front. You can clearly see two of our folks, but there's a third in the hammock behind them. Um, we call him B. He's the youngest of our group. He's 13. And he kept insisting that he heard footsteps behind and around him and that he could feel the presence of someone close to him. And evidently he was right based on the footage. So let's take a look. I've got this paused a few seconds before the event takes place. And as I mentioned, there were six of us plus Jack right there. So there's one, two, three, four, five. Number six is right there in the hammock. You can barely see a portion of his face. And that's B. And he kept insisting um, that he felt the presence of something around him. And we all were hearing the footsteps. And so this clip, I'm going to run it forward and let you see what takes place and then we'll pause it and back it up. Watch in this area right here, coming out from behind Zach's shoulder, what happens. You see that? Let's back it up just a little bit and do it one more time. And then I'll slow it down. So something comes out from behind there. Um, it's shadowy looking. A lot of people would immediately go, oh my God, it's a shadow person. It's not a shadow person. It's an energy signature. And we're using IR and sometimes things look strange on IR. Um, Bowden is extremely sensitive. B, he's extremely sensitive, always has been. And if there were something about that shadow that was negative or impacted him in a de detrimental way, he would note that. However, he was very excited and kept saying, whatever's here really likes me. Um, and I'm sure it did because he has great energy. He is wide open, very grounded. He's a, a very balanced young man. And so let's back it up just a little and then we'll, I'll pull it forward slowly so that you can see it comes out from behind Zach's shoulder right about there see it it's starting to come out and it moves along the edge of the hammock and then it seems to go off in this direction like away from us into the woods um, but it's really hard to say and <clears throat> so like I said B was very excited and could feel this and so these footsteps that we were hearing around us in the woods is what led to Zach right here picking up the handheld IR camera and um, getting the next couple of clips that I'm going to show you. Here's our second clip from the evening and at this point there was a whole lot of excitement. Um, we were up and moving around because not only were we hearing footstep like noises all the way around us uh, in the wood line, but we were seeing things in the sky at this point. And when I say things in the sky, um, we weren't seeing a whole lot of the traditional lights streaking across the sky or, or moving around. We were actually seeing 
something that's kind of hard to explain without having footage of it. Um, and unfortunately, we didn't get that footage, but these were, they looked almost like contrails that you would see in the daytime. There were no planes. Um, we, we carefully track and note our um, air traffic lanes when we're doing this, and we do go back to the same places over and over again, so we know where those are when we get there. And um, there were no planes going over top of us, and, and these trails were appearing just out of nowhere. They would materialize in the sky, and they would crisscross into various geometric shapes. We would have, uh, we had one that was literally looked like a cross, and we had another one that looked like um, something much more geometric. We couldn't see the whole thing. And then they would disappear. They would just dissipate. And so we were up on our feet, looking up into the sky um, and seeing these things. And everybody was excited and pointing at them. And we had the laser pointer out and we were shining that up into the sky. And Zach had been recording around the perimeter of the wood line with the IR camera, um, just holding it, trying to see if he could cap capture anything. And when we started seeing these streaks in the sky, he jumped up and came running over and pointed the camera at the sky to try to capture those. Um, unfortunately, that resulted in some very shaky video. And um, we're, I'm gonna show you what we have. It's, it moves around a lot, but you can still get the gist of what's there. We did not capture these streaks in the sky, but we did capture something else. And if you have seen our Hawksview video that's dated December 24th, 2018, you will see that there is uh, a real similarity between what's in the sky in this video and what we took on still pictures in that video. These are two separate locations. They're in the same county, um, but they're two completely separate locations. And one is on video and one was on stills. So if you haven't seen that, um, you might want to look at it. So let's go ahead and look at this clip and I'll explain to you what you're seeing. So I've got this paused. Uh, you'll see that Zach had the video trained on the tree line, as I said, and he's about to swing it up into the sky. I'm going to let it play out for a few seconds. And then as usual, we'll stop it and back it up and talk about it a little bit. So here we go. See that? And the bubbles. The bubbles are very interesting too. We didn't put those there. Um, I'm not sure what those are. They don't look like normal dust particles. They're gently falling downward um, and don't seem to... They just generate out of nowhere and uh, we don't normally see those. We see them once in a while, but we don't normally see them. So let's back this up just a little and move it forwards and we'll pause it so as I said um, we were back it up just a little <clears throat> excuse me we were seeing these streaks in the sky and we didn't get the streaks but we got this sphere and if you notice over here there's a tree and let me back it up over here, there's a tree. And you see how its location is pretty much dead center in between the two trees. That's important because I have another video um, that we'll look at in a second that puts this much closer to this tree. So either there were two of them, and there's a little bit of evidence that supports that, that at some point, at a point in the future, um, while we were recording this, that two of them showed up or this one moved over to here. Now, I want to talk for a minute about, from a logical standpoint, um, what this could be. Of course, like I said, it pretty much matches the configuration of the spheres that we captured on still camera up at Hawksview on December 24th. My partner, who was the one that actually captured those still pictures back in December, looked at this video and um, he's very logically minded and he said well I think that's probably just a star I think or the moon I think that that Zach probably had the camera 
zoomed way in and it's showing something that's just zoomed up in the sky and so of course um, I agree with those types of things we want to look at that and make sure so I'm gonna back it up to a point before this and I'm gonna show you something real quick so he's this is when he's panning around all right there's the Jeep so he's standing in front of my Jeep this is an IR camera um, headlights of course and everything if if this camera had been zoomed in to the point <clears throat> at which it was able to make a star look like that then the Jeep would have been completely out of focus it would have looked so big in in the frame that you wouldn't even have been able to have told what it was you would have just been seeing you know a bit of the grill or something so we got that one out of the way it's not a star that's been um, like blown up so much that that it it looks strange it's also not the moon uh, we checked that no moon it wasn't even in the right location in the sky for it to be a moon and so let's play through that one more time and again I apologize for the bounciness um, it was unavoidable with handheld and now we're gonna go look at the second clip which was a few minutes later so this is our third and final clip for this video and it is the second clip that Zach captured with the handheld IR and this took place about 10 minutes after the first clip which is the previous clip that you just watched and as with the previous clip we weren't filming skyward because we saw these spheres they weren't visible to us um, we couldn't see them at all we were filming in an attempt to capture another set of these trails that had appeared in the sky after the first ones had dissipated and we had been watching the sky very closely hoping to see another set of these things and we had about given up uh, we were just about to start packing things up and I happened to look skyward and there's another one and it was really cool <clears throat> because I actually saw it appearing and uh, I can tell you these are not trails from jets these they they don't appear in the sky like a jet trail does it they don't start at one end and then come into existence behind the jet as it moves laterally these things appear all at once um, and it's not like a quick thing <clears throat> they appear over a, a span of a few seconds but they appear in their entirety from one end to the other all at once and so I saw one of them starting to take shape and I, I called to Zach and said hey we've got another one coming and then at that point there was a, a one that began to form perpendicular to the first and there were a couple of others that looked to be trying to form but they didn't come into existence as clearly as the other ones did so these are what we were trying to film and we didn't get the trails but we got another sphere um, so let's look at that so I've got this paused at the spot at which the sphere was um, captured and again I apologize profusely for the shakiness of the video it was handheld no tripod and it was really hard to um, hold it still pointed skyward and again we were not looking for this sphere we were looking for something else the trails but this is what we saw so I'm gonna let this run forward a little bit and I want you to notice in the first couple of seconds that over here the tree appears and the distance between this sphere and that tree is a lot shorter than it was in the previous clip and as you watch the clip move forward Zach is going to pan the camera in this direction and you're going to see that other tree come in to frame and along about in here there looks to be the other sphere looks to still be there but it's much fainter so let's roll that forward look at the whole thing and then we'll back it up see there's that tree that distance is a lot shorter and Zach is um, he's playing with the IR settings so here's the other one there's that tree and that's about the extent of the good stuff so 
let's back that up to where we were to begin with and roll it forward a little slower. Again, there's that tree and that distance is a lot shorter. This is where Zach was, um, he was playing with the IR settings on the camera. It has three levels and he was pushing those to try to get a clearer view of the sky. Again, he wasn't trying to get this. We couldn't see that, but that's why the the picture changed and, and the contrast became much higher. And which I'm really glad he did that because we can see this much better. And again, this thing very closely resembles what we picked up in the still images at Hawksview on December 24th. So if you haven't seen that, I suggest you go look at it because they are extremely similar. And then as he moves the camera around and we go off to the left, you see it right, it kind of blinks in and out right there. There's that other tree. There's the edge of the other tree. And that sphere was originally kind of equidistant between the two trees. And it looks like it's probably right there. I'm not sure if it was dematerializing or if it had moved further away. It looks almost like it's dissipating, but there's something going on there. So I'm of the opinion that we had two spheres at this point, maybe more. There looks like there's something going on out here too. Um, but I can't prove it or disprove it. It's just what the video, the footage shows. So let's back it up just a little. So there's the one. <clears throat> which is obviously very materialized and then there's the other and going back to the original thought of you know could it be the moon or whatever uh, if that's the case we now have two moons in the sky so that's not happening so that's the end of our clips for this particular video I'm trying to keep this short enough uh, that it's not a burden to watch and there's some in piece information after this clip that explains who we are what we do why we do it and there's also some technical information uh, about the conditions and the equipment that was used if you're interested and you want to watch that. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed the content, please subscribe and maybe give us a thumbs up. That really helps us. Thanks a bunch. And here's some technical info just in case you're interested. Uh, we started this session at approximately 6 o'clock p.m. with our equipment set up. And as usual, our setup was followed by playing of crop circle tones and a short field meditation. These resources can be found on Dr. Stephen Greer's website at www.seriousdisclosure.com forward slash apps. It should be noted that for the majority of the day, as I usually do, I concentrated on the fact that we would be performing a session in the evening just in case anyone was listening. This seems to really help um, improve the connections that we get when we go to do the sessions in the evening. I literally just spend the day putting it out there, um, dropping into a meditative state, sometimes as many as a dozen times a day, very short states. Uh, it doesn't take a whole lot of hoopla to do it. It's just you drop into the state and you kind of vector where your location is and where you intend to be. And you ask, please come and see us. You know, we would like to communicate that kind of thing. Um, do that a couple times a day, 10 times a day, however many times a day you're able to do it. And that seems to really improve um, the contact that we get in the evenings. So all the clips for this session were captured by either a handheld infrared camera or game cam that was mounted to my Jeep. And we ended the session at about 9.30 p.m. After packing up, we were out of there about 9.45. I chose these clips from the dozen or so that we gathered during this particular session because they represented typical events which normally occur during our CE5 sessions. All of these clips basically show the same thing, the energetic signature or form of intelligent beings who were generous enough to make the effort to manifest and attempt to communicate simply because we requested it. If you're not familiar with what a CE5 session is, the abbreviation stands for Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. This is the only type of extraterrestrial contact which is deliberately initiated by human beings for the purpose of building relationships with non-terrestrial beings for the purpose of communication, the acquisition of knowledge and the betterment of our planet and our society. 
The ultimate goal of these efforts is the eradication of the current status quo of hatred, fear, and separation, which has been in place for far too long. Our current state of existence is not sustainable. We are destroying our planet and ourselves. There is a better way. We can learn from those who have been where we are and managed to evolve past it, if we're only willing to make the effort to do so. We are some of the ones who are willing to do so without question. You can do this too. Anyone can. All it takes is willingness to push back against the status quo with fearlessness and to not be afraid of the unknown. We Own the Light is dedicated to the enrichment and evolution of humanity spirituality and we're in direct opposition to the fear-mongering and secrecy that fosters society's current state of hatred and separation. We work toward this through showing others the energetic connectivity between all things, including those which have been traditionally feared or thought of as being dangerous, especially extraterrestrial beings. I once heard Dr. Stephen Greer say, they might own the night, but we own the light. And for those of us willing to do whatever it takes to be a cog in the wheel that crushes the current societal and political state to smithereens, no truer statement has ever been uttered. This channel, our website, and all of our efforts, past, present, and future, are dedicated to this cause, and we are indebted to Dr. Greer for his tireless pursuit of the same. As St. Francis of Assisi was quoted to say, All of the darkness in the world cannot extinguish the light from a single candle. And he was so right. We have no fear of the darkness because we own the light. Do you have the courage to own your light? We think you do.